Amen. Sage, I welcome you to our Bible study tonight, and I pray that the Lord will do for us what He intends to do as we study the word, take in the word, believe the word, and purposefully live in the word. The Lord grant us His own desire that His word will bear fruit in every life in jesus name father we thank you for the bible study thank you for bringing us together thank you lord because your word is life and is spirit and when that word enters into us it will bear fruit the fruit of the spirit and we're asking you lord tonight that your word will so penetrate our heart and will so grieve our heart that we'll have the purpose, the intention, and the desire, and the consecration that we live by that word without looking back, without compromising, and without unbelief in Jesus' name. Help us to have unwavering faith in the word, unwavering focus on the word, as well as unwavering fruit that, bear, that is born in our hearts and lives in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the Lagos church said, and in the global church with us say, Amen. Thank you very much. You can see that we're coming to Daniel chapter 2. And in Daniel chapter 2 today, we're looking at verses 14 all through to 30. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2 verse 14. In verse 14 it says, Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay to kill, to terminate their lives, to kill and to stay, slay the wise men of Babylon. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, he answered and said unto Ariel, the king said, Captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? And then Ariel made the thing known to Daniel. In verse 16, it tells us, it said, Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time that he would show the king the interpretation. Remember that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had had a dream. And he had forgotten the dream. And now he wanted the magicians and the astrologers and all those wise men of Babylon that they will come and reveal the forgotten dream. Not only reveal the forgotten dream, they will also give him the interpretation because he was frightened of the dream. Even though he had forgotten, he still wanted to know the meaning of that dream. That's why when those uh, magicians and astrologers and the wise men and the Chaldeans could not interpret, could not even find out the dream, he decided because he was fearful. Because he was frightened. A frightened man is a furious man. It's an angry man. And he felt, okay, maybe I'm going to die because of that dream, the revelation, the meaning of that dream. Maybe it means I'm going to die before I die. He wanted to just lay everybody and he sent the executioner out that they will, they will kill all the wise men of Babylon and it happens to be that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were part of the wise men they had trained and they didn't know about all this so if they knew they would have prayed but then they now came to Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they said it's, it's time for you to go. You are going to die now because there is a decree from the king of Babylon that they will slay everyone. And then Daniel, look at Daniel. That will make somebody fearful, somebody frightened. That will make somebody say, the end has come and I'm not ready. And a decree had been passed. And so he, did, so he said, why, why the haste? Take me to the king and tell the king, I'm going to reveal the dream. He had not even prayed. 
And yet he was so confident he was going to reveal the dream and was going to give the interpretation. And then he came to the king. Look at the man that's about to die by the edict of Babylon. He was peaceful. He was calm. And he spoke to the king in a peaceful manner. That's the evidence that man was saved. If he wasn't saved, number one, he will be afraid of death. If he wasn't saved and he wasn't sure of the connection he had with the Lord, in such a situation, a peculiar situation, he would have said, what am I going to do? I have that thing unsettled. I have that thing unsettled. Am I going to meet God? Because I know without holiness, no man shall save the Lord. They knew that in the Old Testament. And then, if we die now, where do I spend eternity? No question like like that, that man had calmness, that man had peace of mind. It was a personal peace that he had. The peace we have when we come to know the Lord in salvation is not a communal peace. It's not a, a, you know, a peace for the community. It's a personal peace that we have. And uh, Daniel demonstrated that it was a perceived peace. You could tell us uh, Nicodemus was sitting down there. Okay, Daniel, what have you come to say? I'm very Come, he said, Give me time and I will show the king the interpretation of his dream. It was perceived. The people that saw him could perceive that this man had personal peace. This man had a perceived peace that you could see. This man had a penetrating, persuasive peace. It, it penetrated into the heart of Nebuchadnezzar that this man must be able to discover him confidently and calmly that he's uh, telling me is going to reveal the dream. The question is, if we're truly born again, personal, if we're truly children of God, when situations like that happen that we don't know what we can do and other people don't know what they're going to do, do we still have uh, that personal peace of the Lord? Think about that. A little problem and then we're jolted and we begin to talk in an erratic manner. The peace that comes with salvation is personal is perceived other people can see that you are not jilted you are not uh, you know kind of a uh, boss here and there and you are not harassed by your thoughts because the people can see this man this woman is truly born again in every situation in his life in her life she he has the peace and then it's a kind of penetrating persuasive peace when you talk you're not kind of exercise and you're not kind of jolted you have the peace that the people can they are persuaded this person has and experience of the Lord. And then, this is the perfect peace that I just spoke about, that when your heart is staged on God, you have perfect peace. This is what Paul the Apostle spoke about in Philippians chapter 4, that the peace of God will rule in your heart. That's what we're looking at today. And the reason we're looking at this is a man like us, a man of like passion, like us, that he could have peace in that dire, serious, perplexing situation. If God could do it for him, he'll do it for us in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you tonight. We're teaching on an unforgettable Daniel for a forgotten dream. A forgotten dream, and then it comes and there lies on the line. An unforgettable Daniel. We divided the message to three parts. Number one, we're looking at decisive prayer for the dream's recovery. The dream that was lost, the revelation that was lost. Watch. Nebuchadnezzar had that he himself could not recover. And now we have a people, believers, that prayed a decisive prayer for the dream's recovery. Number two is the delightsome praise for divine revelation. As they prayed that same night, 
They didn't pray for seven days. They didn't pray for 30 days. They just prayed there. And according to the promise of the Lord, that as they were praying, he will show up, he will reveal himself unto them. That while they were yet praying, he will give them the answer, he will give them the solution if they could have answers to their prayers before Christ came. Before the cross, before Calvary, how much more now? We're on this other side of Calvary, on this other side of the cross. When you pray, God will answer. Because of Christ, because of the cross, because of Calvary, because of what he has accomplished for us already, he opened the way to the Father through the veil of his flesh. And if Daniel could have, if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have immediate answer to what they were looking for, understand. Have confidence in the Lord as you pray tonight. I said as you pray tonight. And as you pray for the rest of your life, the Lord will answer in Jesus' name. The light some praise for divine revelation. Number three is dynamic presentation without any doubtful reservation. After they got the answer, they now came to Nebuchadnezzar and see them as they came. Dynamic. And see them as they came. Sure. And see them as they came. They were going to present the dream. The forgotten dream. And they so presented it, one will study later, in details that Nebuchadnezzar was convinced, he remembered, he recalled when Daniel spoke to him about the dream that this is the dream and will give you the interpretation. And that, that means then they came in, in in a dynamic way to present the dream without any doubtful preservation. Daniel did not say, am I right? He knew he was right. Daniel did not say, is that so? That will mean that he wasn't sure, but he was very sure. And I pray in our lives, the way the Lord deals with us, that kind of assurance and that kind of certainty will project from us and people will know that we really know what we we'll say and we really know what the Lord has done and what the Lord is going to do. Look at number one here. Number one is the decisive prayer for the dream's recovery. Uh, we're reading from, uh, from Daniel chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 16. It tells us that Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Verse 17. In verse 17 it says, Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, his friends. Now, verse 18. In verse 18, that day would desire mercies of the Lord of heaven. Of the God of heaven, it wasn't by marriage. The works of our hand, the character in our life, and the uncompromising life we have lived cannot qualify us to say, God, you must do this for me because I merit it by the life I live. No, it's by the mercy of God. And so they desired mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows, the friends, should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. And then in verse 19, verse 19, then was a secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Let's look at this under three subtitles. We're looking at number one, calm posture of fearlessness despite the declared decree. Number two, common pursuit with friends with deeper devotion. Number three, confident prayer of faith under a deadly 
decree. We're looking at number one there. Number one there is the calm posture of fearlessness despite the declared decree. Uh, already we've read Daniel chapter 2 verses 14 to 16. Uh, let's look at the Psalms. We're looking at Psalm 56, reading from verse 4 there. In Psalm 56 verse 4, it says, In God I will praise His word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. You see, when you have fear, fear in prayer, you'll be forgetting the promises of God you should quote. When you have fear, fear in searching for something, you'll be having doubtful mind, will I see, will I see it, will I not see it. When you have fear and you want to talk to somebody, you will be internally shaking. And because you're internally shaking, you are not able to directly say and convincingly say everything you want to say. You see, when you have fear, you are progressing, you are proposing, you are planning, you want to get something done, that fear will not allow you to stay calm and to stay connected and to talk convincingly and to do what you ought to do that will bring results. But when you stay your mind on God, when you stay your mind on the Lord himself who has saved you, who has sanctified you, and you know there is no, that there is no hindrance and there is no hurt and there is no barrier between you and God You can come boldly and then say what you want to say That's why the psalmist said In God I will praise his word In God have I put my trust I will not fear That's right, look at that will That means to so make up your mind It's something of the will It is not something I wish I don't fear I think I will try not to be afraid But you have the will I will not fear It is that that gives you confidence and boldness In anything you are called to do And in everything you have to do It tells us in verse 10 Verse 10 of that same chapter it says in God when I praise his word in the Lord I will praise his word and then he tells us in verse 11 it says in God have I put my trust I will not be afraid what man can do unto me in verse 12 it says thy vows are upon me thy vows are upon me O God I will render praises unto thee and then in verse 13 verse 13 says for thou has delivered my soul from death hey, look at Daniel he knew that the decree to die was there the decree that he'll slay kill everybody was there but he said ah, ah, that will not happen to me and that will not happen to you I said that will not happen to you because he said, thou hast already delivered my soul. You have marked my day. And you have shown me as I go on that I am going to have a long life. And this will not kill me. He's still going to live longer than Nebuchadnezzar himself. He's still going to live longer than the son that succeeded him. He's still going to live in the kingdom of Darius. And so he had the confidence. Whatever decree they make and whatever plan they are making, he said, Thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before the God in the before God in the light of the living? Then in verse 14, he concludes and he says in verse 14 that his life was still preserved and that he was still going to have this life and this was not the time to die in uh, verse 14 uh, verse, oh, sorry up to verse 13 and then we're looking at uh, Hebrews chapter chapter 
13 verse 6 Hebrews chapter 13 we're looking at verse 6 it says so that we may boldly say now we have come to this side of the cross we have come to this side after the after the salvation and after the cross after the sacrifice it comes now to this side of the cross and it says now we the believers of the new testament may boldly say the lord is my helper and I will not fear, I will not, I will not. You have to make up your mind that God is watching over you. You have to make up your mind that God has the final say in your life. You have to make up your mind that the word of God is truth and the plan of the enemy will come to naught in the believer's life in Jesus' name. Why is the amen so low today? And then it says, it says, I will not fear what man, what man, what man shall do unto me. We're coming to the next point there. That's number two now. Number two is the common pursuit with friends with deeper devotion. Daniel was going to tell Shadak, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were going to unite together in prayer. And as they united together in prayer, they were of the same faith, of the same conviction, of the same consecration, of the same lifestyle. When you say, I have a prayer partner, if you are up and that prayer partner is down, you come to his level. You come to our level. I have a prayer partner. We're going to pray about this difficulty. You have faith. They have fear. Their fear will put your will put your faith to their level. I have a prayer partner, and the prayer partner is barely safe, doubtful. We don't know whether he's in the kingdom or out of the kingdom. We don't know whether he's, you know, overcoming sin or not. And if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You want to have a prayer partner that have the same mind, the same experience, the same faith, and the same per perception of the word of God. And so Daniel now came to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they had the same devotion, deeper devotion than the ordinary floating superficial believers. And now we come to Daniel chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 17. It said, then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, his friends. Look at this. Uh, we need to be at par with what is going on in the community. These people, even Daniel, they didn't know there was any edict. They didn't know there was any threat of death. We should know. If we don't know about the problem, how do we pray against the problem, against the decree? If we do not know about the challenge, how do we get ourselves ready to face that challenge and to solve the problem? But now, he came to make that known unto his companions. Companions. Then in verse 18, in verse 18 it says that they would desire the mercies of the God of heaven and concerning this secret, it was a secret to the whole nation, a secret to Nebuchadnezzar because he couldn't discover the dream, he couldn't tell the dream, it was a secret to everybody in the whole nation, it's a secret that came from God and because it came from God, now they will ask God, Lord you know all secrets and this secret is coming from you and Nebuchadnezzar has forgotten and because of that he's furious, because of that he wants to kill everybody where your children for our sake reveal the dream so that we will not perish and the people of um, Babylon who were the wise men of Babylon that they too should not die and so it says that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows, his friends, should not perish with the rest of the wise men of 
Babylon. And now, when you look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, reading from verse 30, it's talking about when we unite together in prayer. We have the same mind, we have the same heart, we have the same faith, we have the same goal, we have the same passion. And because of that, we unite together to get this answer from the Lord. It says, how would one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shot them up. It's talking about the power of united effort, united love, united skill, united purpose, united prayer that one can put ten can put a thousand ten thousand two can put a thousand to flight and two united together can put ten thousand to flight. We're looking at the New Testament promise in Matthew chapter eighteen, reading from verse eighteen. In uh, Matthew chapter eighteen, verse eighteen, verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Give me a good amen there. Jesus said, even you as a believer alone by yourself, whatsoever you bind on earth, what does that mean? You can bind that decree of Nebuchadnezzar, you can bind that cause, you can bind that personality behind premature death and Nebuchadnezzar said, all of you will die and then you can say no to that. If you want to say no to that, how do you say no? God confirm it in heaven in Jesus' name. It says, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then verse 19, and again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. Many times we do not uh, analyze the promise of God. Many times we do not properly interpret the promise of God. It says anything. If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they ask, they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. It will be done. Amen. I said it will be done. Amen. Even when the fire is burning outside and the rain is pouring down, stormy rain outside, if you calmly, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, stay in there and you join your faith together and you say that thing shall stop, what will happen? it will stop the lord answer our prayers in jesus name look at number three now number three confident prayer of faith under a deadly decree the confident prayer they prayed they are not saying oh god if it's your will it's his will that those people will not perish is not interested in the death even of the wicked. It's his will. It, it, this is your will that will perish not. Of course, you're not going to perish. You're not going to perish under the anger and the fury and the frustration of Nebuchadnezzar. If you're going to die, it will be God's time for God's purpose. When your mansion is ready and then you say, Bye-bye, I'm going to a better accommodation. Amen. Somebody help me shout amen. amen. And so they had confident praying. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 17. It says, then Daniel, Daniel went to his house, and he made the thing known to Ananiah and Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, verse 18, in verse 18 it says that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven at concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not 
perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Verse 19, in verse 19, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Now, uh, for us, for the secret that the king is looking for, that our families are looking for, that uh, our companions are looking for, the secret that we ourselves, that we are that we're looking for, we're searching and we we'll say, Lord, do this for me, do this for me. And then revelation comes to us. Can I tell you, number one, we must be saved and be assured of our salvation. Not they say, I am saved. No. Not they say, once I am saved, I'm saved forever. No. That's a doctrine on the other side. This is something practical. And this is something personal. There is no condemnation in the heart because you are not walking in the flesh. You are walking after the Spirit. And the Spirit of God is bearing witness with your heart. Not somebody pumping you up and encouraging you. You've been coming to church for a long time, but now you are saved. Don't doubt. You are saved. No, not that one. This is the Spirit of God bearing witness in your heart that the grace of God has come to you. And that grace that appeared to you brought salvation. And it teaches you to deny all ungodliness and worldly laws. And it's helping you, the grace of God helping you to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Then with that confidence, you can come to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm your child. I know it by the life I live. I know it by the faith I have. I know it by the witness of the Spirit of God in me. I know it by the victory over sin that you give me. And now you go to the Lord with confidence and you pray and the Lord will answer. Look at James chapter 1. We're reading from verse 16. Verse 6. It says, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering as Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were kneeling down as they were praying. Nothing else was coming to their heart. What if God does not answer? What if we perish? What if this? What? There was no if in their heart because it was the prayer of faith. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toss. He prayed the prayer of faith. We're looking at Mark chapter 11 and we're looking at verse 22. Mark chapter 11 verse 22. And Jesus answering says unto them, have faith in God. The God that never fails. Have faith in God. The God that loves you so much, he doesn't want you to perish with the Gentiles or the pagans or the Babylonians. Have faith in God. The God who has promised that call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you never knew that God that invited you to pray and told you that was going to answer, have faith in God. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, therefore I say unto you, I say unto you, you must always understand when you read the promise of God, this is what God is saying unto me. The God that cannot fail. This is what God is saying to me. And when you know it like that, that this is what the Lord is saying unto you, you will have your answer. A perfect answer. It says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. And I will have them. And the church will have them. The Lord will answer our prayer. Isaiah chapter 65. And I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 65. Reading from verse 24. And it shall come to pass in your own day. It shall come to pass at your own time. It shall come to pass when you pray. Amen. 
and it shall come to pass that before they call before they call before they call i will answer he knows what's in our heart he knows our desire he knows our petition even before we open our mouth he said i'm ready go on talking i'm going to answer your prayer and while they are yet speaking i will hear while they are yet speaking he will hear now we come to point uh, number two in point number two is that they like some praise for divine revelation they like some praise for divine revelation we're looking at daniel chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 20 here in daniel chapter 2 verse 20 daniel answered and said blessed be the name of god forever and ever for wisdom and might are his he didn't rush out because you know some people then in haste in a hurry will be looking nobody has got this answer and then we pray to the Lord and the Lord gave us uh, this answer and uh, Nebuchadnezzar is waiting impatiently he wants the answer now why are we going to hurry no other person has uh, this secret and this is what the Lord has specially revealed with divine favor and so will not rush out will give glory to God will praise the name of the Lord will we'll shout his praise because of what he has done and it says and Daniel uh, answered and said blessed be the name of God God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. Verse 21. In verse 21, and he changes times and see and the seasons. He removes kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. Verse 22. In verse 22, he reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and uh, he and the light dwelleth with him. Verse 23. In verse 23, uh, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given the wisdom and might, and has, uh, who has given me wisdom and might, and he, you have made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou has now made known unto us the king's matter. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, perpetual praise to God for his wisdom and might. Number two, present praise to God for his will and uh, over mankind. And number three, personal praise to God for his gift and wisdom a, a gift of wisdom and might number one is the perpetual per, perpetual praise to god that every time every time perpetually we're praising god for his wisdom and for his might in uh, daniel chapter 2 again verse 20 it said daniel answered and said blessed be the name of god forever and ever from generation to generation. What that's why it's perpetual. For wisdom and might are his. In First Kings chapter 8, reading from verse 56. This is the reason why we are praising God. This is the reason why you ought to praise God. Because he makes a promise. And then he fulfills the promise. Says, Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised according to all that he promised no one has failed it says there has not there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant he said because God fails not 
and he fulfills his promise all the promises he has made and the one we're claiming now and the one we're standing on now is fulfilling that as well he has not disappointed the people who came before us and the people of the present day is not going to disappoint anyone and those who are, the, those who are coming the, uh, the people of the next generation is still going to bless them because of that perpetually we're praising the Lord look at number two here number two here of its uh, present praise to God for his will over mankind his will over mankind it tells us in Daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 21 and it changes the times and the seasons and he removes kings and setteth up kings that is all the kings who are reigning all the kings who are ruling those who ruled in the past even Nebuchadnezzar he placed him there even Belshazzar he placed him even Darius he placed him even Cyrus he placed him there God says is the one in charge and is in control over mankind so that's why the children of God are not perplexed and they are not their hearts are not perplexed and their lives are not up and down and they are not bothered about this is going to happen who will be there who will be there the man of God's choice will be there no worry in your heart no anxiety in your heart this is happening now because of that. That's what they say. That's happening now because of that. And then people are wondering, how shall we send our children to school if this person comes in? How shall we have enough to eat if this person comes in? How shall we practice our faith if this one comes in? God is in charge. In our country here, God is in charge. In all the continent of Africa, God is in charge. That's why you are calm. Don't get into discussion with those who do not know God. Don't stand on the street corner discussing with the people that do not know that God is overall over the whole of mankind. And don't be arguing in your home. You're eating and then somebody brings up, look at this, look at this. And it's within one month now this will happen, that will happen. Why don't you enjoy your food and leave all that in the hands of God? And God will do the best for our country. Because it says, He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings, He does, and setteth up kings, He does, to give, He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding look at jeremiah we're looking at uh, jeremiah chapter 27 and we're looking at verse 5 jeremiah chapter 27 reading from verse 5 i have made the earth the man and the bees that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and i have given it to whom it seemed meet unto me he said is the one that does that he said i created the earth and all the nations of the earth and your country and my country our country that he created everything and then it says and i have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me so we're not going to have any sleepless night who will be there who will be there when he comes well we know no sleepless night no anxiety and no discussion that will jolt us we're believers in god and god has said he will give it to whomsoever seems right unto him. He will do it. We're looking at Psalm 75. And we're reading from verse 6. In Psalm 75, verse 6, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, But 
God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Amen. Amen. We're coming to number three here. Number three, we're looking at personal praise to God for his gift of wisdom and might. In Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 22, Daniel chapter 2, we're looking at verse 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. In verse 23, it says, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desire of thee. And for thou has now made known unto us the king's matters. Daniel praised the Lord and his friends praised the Lord with him because God, God alone that could reveal secrets and could give wisdom and might to anyone, he has revealed the secret unto them. And when it comes to your turn, that you know a secret that the philosophers of the world, the coaches in the world, and the trainers of the world, and the investigators of the world could not reveal unto you. And then you go to God, everything belongs to him. Wisdom, might, secrets, all belong to him. He will reveal unto you. No secret will perplex your life. No secret will give you high blood pressure. That you are and sleepless nights. That you are just there on the bed. You cannot sleep because there is something you don't know. You are wondering about something. How will this affect my life and my family? Rest your mind. He reveal that secret to you. We're looking at Psalm 119 verse 164. Psalm 119 verse 164. It says, seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. And then in verse 165, great peace a day which love thy love and nothing shall offend them. Nothing will jolt you. Nothing will confuse you. Nothing will embarrass you because your mind is stayed on him. And great peace have they which love thy law. And nothing, nothing, and nothing shall offend them. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 25. Matthew 11, verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes, babes in Christ, new uh, children, newborn children in Christ. In your simplicity of mind, you know God is your father now, and he has all the secrets in his hand, and when you ask him, he will reveal these things unto babes in Jesus' name. And look at verse 26 there, in verse 26, even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. Verse 27, verse 27 says, Says, all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the son but the father neither knoweth any man the father save except the son and he to whom whomsoever the son will reveal him. I pray that when your time comes, there will be no embarrassing silence from heaven in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three is the dynamic presentation without any doubtful reservation. You know, when you think you know something, 
And then you now come to the person that had the dream originally. And you are to appear before him And you come And you look at his face He's still a little bit angry And he's still wondering Daniel, you have come Can you tell me the district Do you know for a certainty That you have the secret If you didn't know who your God is If you didn't know the revelation of the Heavenly Father If you didn't have the assurance of faith You'll be jolted a little But not Daniel, no doubtful reservation. Everything that he had heard, that he had known, he knew. This is the truth. Dynamic presentation without any doubtful reservation. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 24. In Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 24, Therefore Daniel went in unto Ariel. Whom the king had ordained to destroy, to kill, to slay the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. If your life could be a source of preservation to other people, those who should have died, those who should have perished, your life, your knowledge, your wisdom, your vision, your passion brings life unto them. Those who are under the fear of death and a fear of death because of sickness, or fear of death because of the harassment of the devil, or fear of death because of a secret decree against their lives. And then you as a believer saved, sanctified, and baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can come and your life could become a preservative for the people that should have died. I pray the Lord will so use your life. He said, destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, number one is the fearless Daniel before the frightened warrior king. Number two is the faithful declaration of future worsening kingdoms. Number three is the firm decree of the foremost wise king, the king of heaven. We're looking at number one. Number one is the fearless Daniel before the frightened warrior king. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2 again and we're reading from verse 25 now. In verse 25 it says, Then Ariel brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him, unto the king, I have found a man. I have found a man. I have found a man. I pray at a time when the world has confusion, when your world has confusion, and when uh, the people around you, when they are perplexed because they do not have solution to the problems confronting them, I pray they will find you that you can supply the answer. When you're looking for a woman, that a woman of God that can do this, I pray they will find you in Jesus' name. I have found a man of the captives of Judah. Don't worry about what they say, you know, captive of Judah, unemployed person, somebody from that unknown tribe, somebody from that port. Don't worry about that. It is what you have that will bring you before the king. And it is what you know that will bring you before the king. Who is that? Who is that? Well, is that lowly fellow there? Is that an educated person there? Don't worry about that. It is what you have. It is what you know that will bring you before the king. Once you have the solution, the solution to the problems of this life, what, where you came from and your stature and all, whatever, all that will not matter. I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. We're looking at verse 26. In verse 26, it says, The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, Art thou able 
to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Daniel, are you sure you have the solution to this problem? A national problem. Are you sure you have solution to this a problem that perplexed everybody? That even me, that I had the dream I had forgotten. Are you sure that you are able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Verse 27, in verse 27, then Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men and the astrologers and the magicians and the soothsayers show unto the king. Look at uh, chapter 21 of uh, Luke. Luke chapter 21, we're reading from verse 24. In Luke 21, 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What's the relationship of that? What, what we're learning. The dream is about the kingdoms of the Gentile world. And those uh, Gentile worlds, they rule. Another one will come. Another one will come. Another one will come. Until the times of the Gentiles be over. And so this dream actually stretches between, from the time of Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon an empire, an emperor and then it goes on to the Middle Persian Empire that is another kingdom that will fall and then the Grecian Empire will rise up that will fall until the time of the Romans and all those kingdoms four of them all those kingdoms, one after the other, all those kingdoms in a large expanse from that time before Christ came until Christ came and until the second coming when it will thrash and crush and destroy all those kingdoms and then the stone will become a mighty mountain all over the world that Jesus will be the king of kings and the king and the lord of lords and the king of the whole universe that's the dream and that's how it spanned such a large period until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled look at verse 26 in verse 26 men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and yet Daniel came in without any fear without any timidity and without any fright at all and without any doubt what if I miss it look at Acts chapter 18 and I'm reading from verse 9 Acts chapter 18 verse 9 then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace. The Lord had sent him with the message of the gospel to the Gentile world. And when he was at Corinth and appeared that, you know, things were rough, the Lord assured him, be not afraid. The same thing the Lord is saying to us, anywhere he sends us, and whatever he sends us to do, whatever we see, the sight that dazzle, and the things that might even torment the heart of the average man or average woman, the Lord is saying, be not afraid, I'm backing you up. I sent you and I told you to proclaim the watch of the gospel to the people you are meeting. Be not afraid, but speak. Speak loud. Speak convincingly. Speak from all your heart and hold not thy peace. In verse 10, verse 10 says, for I am with thee. No man shall set on thee to hurt thee. Amen. When you know that, you'll go to your office confidently. When you know that, you will live in your community confidently. When you know that, you will preach the gospel without fear 
and without fright anytime anywhere because it says i have much people in this city then in verse 11 in verse 11 and he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of god among them we're looking at number two here number two here is a faithful declaration on future worsening kingdoms now he's going to tell the dream and the dream is going to tell about the kingdoms of the earth from one to the other from the other to the next one from the next one to the final one before christ will come and this is about the kingdoms of the world that will be going from bad to worse and worse to worse and worse to the worst it tells us in daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 28 daniel chapter 2 we're reading from verse 28 but there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets do not be afraid or ashamed to declare that a God exists anywhere you are and you know because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth whether they are Jews or Gentiles do not be ashamed and here uh, Daniel was not ashamed he said but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. The dream was not just for the days, for the time, for the period when Nebuchadnezzar was alive. It will be for the latter days, the dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these look at verse 29 in verse 29 as for thee o king thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed now daniel is revealing even the thoughts that nebuchadnezzar had before the dream came he said nebuchadnezzar you must remember when you were to sleep, you were thinking in your heart, what shall be after you have left? Because you are going to leave. Although the magicians and astrologers are saying, King, live forever, you and I know that you are going to depart. And the, the thought came to your mind, what shall come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass in verse 30 in verse 30 it tells us but as for me this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that i have more than any living but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king and that thou mightest know the thoughts of your heart. He said, that's the reason why. Now, the confidence that Daniel had, the declaration that Daniel made fearlessly, courageously, without being afraid of Nebuchadnezzar, of Ariok, of any other uh, uh, Chaldean, that's the kind of courage he wants us to have. That's the kind of mind he wants us to have when he sends us to declare what will come upon people now and also in the future. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 7, Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 7, but the Lord said unto me, unto me, Jeremiah, and unto you as well. The Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Then in verse 8, it tells us in verse 8, be not afraid of their faces because you think their faces show their mind their faces reflect 
the thoughts they have. Their faces will show you what they are planning, what they are thinking, and if they are going to hurt you or harm you, you'll see it on their faces, except they train themselves not to show it on their face. And so, uh, uh, Jeremiah, don't be afraid, do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. In verse 9, it says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And then in verse 10, it says, See, I have this day said thee, over the nations and over the kingdoms and to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. He doesn't want us to be, you know, we're shivering and shaking and timid and fearful and frightened before the people he sends us to. God loves them. And he sends us a message of love that will save their soul, that will deliver them from eternal death, that they will not perish. And if you carry such a wonderful message, a life-saving message, a soul-saving message, and you love the people you are speaking to, then you and God has assured you that he is sending you. He put his word in your mouth. You will not be afraid in Jesus' name. I will not be afraid in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Look at verse 6. Even in that situation, in verse 6, it says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister. When you put the people in remembrance, this is what God has said. This is what is happening now. Everything is according to his word. This is prophecy being fulfilled. And you remind them that Christ is about to come and everyone that is not saved or backsliding shall come back and be saved and everyone that is saved and is not uh, living a consistent holy life and without holiness no man shall save the Lord you encourage them uh, and you pray with them uh, and you counsel them uh, that whatever challenges in their lives not making them to show that consistent life of Christian faith and salvation you root that out of their lives and you lead them to real repentance and restoration and you lead them to that sanctification that without holiness no man shall say the Lord and then you let them seek the power of God that will strengthen them embolden them encourage them empower them that's what the Lord is calling us to and we do that without any fear and we do that without uh, you know shaking or uh, whatever before anyone it says you put the brethren in remembrance of this thing thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast ordained uh, attained it says in verse 16 uh, in verse 16 take heed unto thyself don't be timid take heed unto thyself live courageously live with conviction and live without compromise take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee amen look at number three here number three now we're looking at the uh, firm decree of the most foremost wise king that's god we're talking about god is foremost is the highest is eternal and is and when one kingdom passes away he still remains there and when one king dies and changes and god changes him and he setteth up another god is still 
there. And when one powerful emperor, powerful man, powerful king, when he's deposed, when he's pushed aside, another one comes, God is still there. the same God at the time of uh, Pharaoh, the same God at the time of the Assyrian king Sennacherib, at the same God at the time of Nebuchadnezzar, the same God at the time of Herod, is still the same God on the throne. They come, they go. They come, they perish. They come, they are dethroned. They come, they are driven away. But God remains the same. He is the foremost wise God. And he has his own decree too. And when he makes his own decree, the decree of the eternal God will stand. We're looking at uh, Daniel chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 30. Daniel chapter 2, verse 30. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king that thou mightest know the thoughts of thine heart. In Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 17. Daniel chapter 4. Verse 17, it says in verse 17, it tells us this matter is by the decree of the watches, of the watchers, and that and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high, the most high. God in heaven ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth aid to whomsoever he will. You see that? The God of heaven, the most high, ruleth in the kingdoms of men and he giveth the kingdoms to whomsoever he will and setteth over each. Even the people like look like the basest of men. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King. God is the one that rules. And whoever he puts there, He's still in charge and he has a decree that supersedes, that goes beyond the decree of any man. In Proverbs chapter 8, reading from verse 29. Proverbs chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 29. When he gave to the sea, here is Christ talking, and he said, when the Father the Almighty, the ancient of days, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then in verse 30, he says, Then I was by him. And then he says, As one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Psalm 2, we're looking at verse 6. In Psalm 2, looking at verse 6, it says, Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. That's the Almighty saying. He has the final say. He has the final word about the dominions and the kingdoms of this world. And he says, I sent my, I set my king. That's his only begotten son. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, I will declare the decree. He has the final decree on any life, on any king, 
on any community, on any nation. He has the final decree upon the kingdoms of this world. Nebuchadnezzar does not, did not have the final decree. There is another decree, the decree of the Almighty God that supersedes every other decree on earth. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And then in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, the Gentiles, for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Then in verse 9, in verse 9 he said, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron because all judgment have been given to the hand of the Son of God and shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And then in verse 10 he said, Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be wise now, O ye emperors, be wise now, O ye rulers, because there is one that is higher than the highest. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. And then in verse 11, in verse 11, serve the Lord with fear that he is your fear. If you don't come to the Lord and seek the Lord, now if you perish, if you die in a condition of your sinfulness, even though you are a king, even though you are an emperor, even though you are a ruler, where will you spend eternity? Serve the Lord. Come and repent. Come and seek the Lord and have salvation and remain and abide in that grace of God in salvation. It says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. And then in verse 12, it says, kiss the son, befriend the son, make him your friend, and let all the wall of demarcation between you and the son, the savior, your substitute, and the redeemer. Let everything, the wall of demarcation be broken down and befriend him. Let him say, you are my friend because I have called you, I have chosen you, and I have washed your sin, and I have made you a new creature now in Christ. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled, but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. You put your trust in him, in Christ, the Son of God, to be your Savior. You put your trust in him so that he can be your sanctifier. You put your trust in him so that he can empower you. And that power will make you to stand. And then you'll be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. And his nature will come into you. And because his nature comes into you, you will live the life that glorifies God. The life that when time is ending, dead here for you, for us, and for the world in the rapture, the resurrection you'll go with the Lord in Jesus name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer let's stand up, talk to the Lord in prayer and forget every other thing around you and forget you know whatever it is, anything there, anything there, forget everything and call upon the name of the Lord. We've learned so much today and we need to take all that to the Lord so that his strength will be in us, his power will be in us and the assurance and the fearlessness and the courage and the conviction will be you know look at daniel why can't you be another daniel today talk to the lord in prayer and say oh lord here am i i have heard about the unforgettable daniel i want to so live my life that i too by the grace of god in the strength of the lord and with the real salvation i have I will live an unforgettable life. It starts with salvation. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, 
here I am. That same change you made in Daniel and that same transformation you made in Daniel and that same courage you gave Daniel and that same conviction you gave Daniel, I want to so live the life that I'll fear nothing on earth. And even the Kadnesa with a frown, with his fury and uh, with his uh, fire and fiery nature, Lord, give me the heart that will live for you unforgettable unforgettable anywhere that i find myself in my community i'll so have the truth penetrating my life saturating my life and keeping me to stand firm on the truth tell the lord tell the lord and tell him oh lord here am i pray a decisive prayer a decisive prayer between you and the Lord, telling the Lord, O oh Lord, I want to have that kind of life that is firm, fearless, focused, living for your glory. Tell him, and he will do it in your life. That your life to your neighbors, your life to your community, your life anywhere, everywhere will be unforgettable. They'll know you are a child of God. They'll know you have the grace of God in you. They'll know that that grace of God in you teaches you to deny ungodliness and to deny all worldly lusts and then to live a righteous life, a godly life, a sober life. Tell the Lord, let the light of the gospel so shine in your life that everyone around you beholding you will know you are being of the Lord Jesus, that you're a new creature in Christ, that old things have passed away, and that all things have become new. And if you have friends, prayer partners, let them be people of this like precious faith. Let them be people who are not pretenders, who are not hypocrites let them be people who love the lord like you love the lord who are committed to the lord like you are committed to the lord who are consecrated to the lord completely with all their heart all their soul and all their mind let them be people who have the same understanding and the same deep commitment as you have unto the lord let us say how daniel surrounded himself with people of like precious faith who are your friends are they people that easily give up they can't endure a little persecution they can't endure a little trial they can't endure a passing decree and they are shaking and they, can't, they don't have the same faith you have in the promises of God are those your friends why don't you say Lord help me give me friends that have the same like precious faith friends that will stand where we ought to stand on the promises of god friends that have more of heaven than the earth in their lives tell the lord tell the lord that you'll be able to have a common faith when you make petition before the lord and then you pray with confidence. Any challenge, two of you shall agree together with confidence. Any problem, common problem you're trying to solve, and you pray with confidence. Confidence in the Lord that I know, I know, I know that God will answer. And you have common confidence. The same confidence in the promises of God that while they are yet speaking, I will answer. And before they finish making their petition, I'll give them the solution. And you have that confidence yourself. And then you surround yourself with the people that have the same, the same confidence. Not people that have a different doctrine a different interpretation, a different lifestyle, a backsliding lifestyle, a compromising lifestyle. No. The people that hold on to this world 
and they say, come watch me. Here is where I stand and I stand with you. <clears throat> I stand with you. Tell the Lord. And when God answers prayer, then you come with praise. Praise before the perpetual praise. You're always praising the Lord. You're never grumbling, never complaining. Why did God bring me to this situation? Morning, noon, and night, you're praising the Lord. The answer has come. You're praising the Lord. The Jericho walls are still up. You're praising the Lord. The night in the dungeon, midnight, with Paul and Silas, you're praising the Lord. And it's a praise of God in your mouth, perpetually, that will grant you that miraculous answer that you are seeking. Present time. Praise the Lord. Hold up. Praise the Lord. Traffic jam. Praise the Lord. On the long queue, sweating in your car. Praising the Lord. At all times, in all things, at all places, in every situation, when the people of the world are talking negative and they're talking divergent things, you have your mouth filled with the praises of the Lord. Personal, personal praise. Personal praise. Praising the Lord in a personal way. That man said, seven days, seven times in the day, will I praise your name and pray unto you. Every other hour, just remember the Lord. He is in charge. He is in charge. He is in charge. Nebuchadnezzar not taking the power away from the most high God. God is still in charge. Praise him all the time. And when you are before the people of this world, the fearless, bold, courageous. Don't think of man more than you think of God. Think of God. Meditate on God. Lean on God. Rely on God. Whatever is happening, if that thing is not of God, it will soon pass away. Any decree for many earthly king, nothing will pass away. Is the decree of the King of Kings, the decree of the Lord of Lords, that will stand forever and ever. Don't be afraid of any situation. Caused by man, planned by man, affected by man, he is man, she is just a woman, the king of heaven that has the final decree. And that final decree says you will live. That final decree says no man shall lay any hand on you to hurt you. The final decree, the decree of God says, he'll give you a long life until you finish the calling he has given you. The decree of the foremost wise king is wise. He knows what you need. He knows the direction of your life. He knows the calling upon your life. And he has made a decree. For the son, his only begotten son. And for you, son of God, daughter of God. 
He'll do good in your life. Think of that. Meditate on that. He will see you through. Daniel lived all the days of Nebuchadnezzar. He lived beyond the days of Nebuchadnezzar. He lived beyond the days of Belshazzar. He lived beyond the days of the Middle Persian Empire. He lived, he lived, he lived. And all through his life, no fear, no timidity, no shaking, no compromise, and the grace of God preserved him until he finished what God called him to do. He's gone, you're here, the Lord will see you through. Amen. <clears throat> In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I tell you that the Lord has answered your prayer? Amen. That everything you have been afraid of and your heart was beating for, the problem is solved. Amen. The secret that perplexed you as you go back home, the Lord himself will reveal that secret. Amen. Your life or be lived straightforward, courageously, lovingly, confidently. You are not rude to anybody, and you are not cruel to anybody, and nobody will be rude or cruel to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Raise up your hand, please. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. we thank you for what you did for Daniel in particular, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and for that team, and he came to the king, and the king then dropped all his threat. He was going to kill everybody. Lord, we pray you will use your sons and your daughters in the service today, here, all over the nation, all over the continent, all over the world. Do something special with every brother, every sister in Jesus' name. All the evil decree that other people, other kings or presidents or whatever, leaders of the world that they are bringing up that will ruin, that will destroy, that will slay the lives of people, use your sons here, use your daughters here, use your sons everywhere and your daughters bring them to the position that they will crush and destroy all evil decrees in Jesus name Amen. now Lord we're just getting to know some good new revelations and Lord now that we have this revelation which we didn't have in the past concerning our personal lives and concerning your church and concerning the believers everywhere Lord Spare our lives. Amen. Prolong our lives. Amen. So that all that we are getting to know now, we will make use of them profitably in our communities everywhere. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of your people. Let the knowledge of the Almighty strengthen us from within. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you know us, we know ourselves in the past. We have been timid, we have been fearful, we have been doubtful, we have been anxious. But now, from this present time, let the power of God make us steady. The strength of God energize us in Jesus' name. And Lord, no more fear. No more fear of the devil. No more fear of evil spirits. No more fear of any man. No more fear of any woman. No more fear of any decree of man in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, strengthen your people. Energize your people. Empower your people. 
and help us to have our eyes open so that we look straight ahead and nothing will divert us in Jesus' name. Power for everyone. Strength for everyone. Vision for everyone. Stability of life for everyone. And Lord, by your special, special gift, long life for everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray.